Hello there, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Welcome to another video in Lucidate's machine learning series. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the oldest, simplest, yet still widely used techniques in AI. In this video, we will look at K nearest neighbors, or KNN. We'll first look at analogies between KNN and human classification. We'll then take a formal look at the KNN algorithm. We'll apply it to our loan data set and finally compare it to other supervised learning methods, including decision trees. KNN is based on a very simplified view of how humans discriminate and classify. Let's formalize this. We start with feature detectors. These could be our biological senses or sensors that we have built. Let's call the output of these feature detectors feature vectors. These feature vectors could be neural patterns in our brains, electrical signals, pixel intensities from a camera, or records in a spreadsheet. We feed these feature vectors into some sort of comparator. This comparator is based on a library of examples that we've learned through our experiences or formal education. We are able to recognize similarity between our detected features and patterns that we've already seen. This diagram is a general formulation and could be applied to anything we've learned from very reflexive to highly cerebral. For instance, we've learned to do things like catch a moving ball. So the feature vector would be what our brain sees as the ball is traveling towards us. And the classification would be the patterns of muscle tension and relaxation needed to catch the moving ball. But as this is a general formulation, it needn't be reflexive. It could be more cerebral, such as mounting a legal challenge. The feature vector here contains the facts of the case. The classification is our legal argument. This is based on our experiences and the legal precedents that we've learned. We are able to generalize. We don't have to have seen the exact feature vector before, the precise arc of the ball, or the exact same set of legal facts. We've seen feature vectors that are close enough to be able to apply what we have learned. So this principle carries over to the design of the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. We look for features that are a close enough match to a pattern that we've seen before. Let's first look at a simple example and then apply it to a more complex case from our lone default dataset. Here we see two distinct classifications in a two-dimensional dataset. The red group has high x and y values. The green cluster has both low x and low y values. If we have an observation in yellow, x1, it would be easy to classify it as a red item. While it is not identical to any red item that we have yet seen, it is closer to all the red items than it is to any of the green items. Here, the closest distances are shown as dashed blue lines and the furthest distances by dashed purple ones. Likewise, and for the same reason, if we saw another point, x2, we would wish to classify this as green. Clearly, there's a decision to make if x3 is positioned somewhere between the two groups. The closest point here is green 3. If we use this as a classifier, then x3 would be classified as green but perhaps we can look at more samples than just the closest. If we look at the five closest neighbors, then we would classify point X3 as red. And this is the simple principle behind K nearest neighbors. We choose a number K and then take a simple majority vote amongst the K nearest neighbors to our data point. More precisely, this will be a majority vote if we have two classes, that's to say a binary classification problem, or a plurality vote, if we're deciding between three or more classes. Let's take a look at a still simplified but more realistic example with our lone default data set. So that we can render the information on the screen, we'll look at a feature vector containing just three terms, the debt to income ratio, the overdraft ratio, and the credit rating. 
In this 3D visualization, we can see the data points that default in red and the data points that correspond to the borrowers who repay shown in green. If we have a point shown here in yellow, then we can allocate it to the red cluster for a wide range of K values. Here we're showing K equals 11. Likewise, a second data point here is much closer to the green cluster. Again, we're showing a K value of 11. In this group, there's only one vote for red. The rest are all green. Bear in mind, this is a simplified example for practical data sets we will have many more than three features. Our loan data set has a dozen, and many data sets will have an order of magnitude more than that. Representing more than three dimensions on a screen in a meaningful way is challenging. You can represent 4D geometry with movement, as you can see with this Tesseract, but showing the relationships between parameters in high dimensional spaces is difficult. But this is not a problem for k-nearest neighbours. The algorithm only requires us to calculate the distance between our sample point and our known points. The formula for the distance between points in 2D and 3D is shown on your screen. It's easy to calculate the distance between points in a multi-dimensional feature space, as you see here. If we look at our loan data set, we don't have 1,024 dimensions, but we do have 12. Visualizing the 12 dimensional feature space won't be possible, but we can train a KNN model on this data and visualize its accuracy, look at its receiver operator characteristic, its F1 score, as well as its precision and recall. As usual, we'll eliminate the loan EIDs and the sparsely populated 90 days bad rating flag we can train this model on this data in under five minutes on an ordinary MacBook. The result you are seeing is for a K of 47. I tested K for a range of values from three up to 99. There was not much variation in performance. Accuracy scores ranged from 79.5 for a K value of seven up to 80% with a K of 99. The best overall scores, F1, precision, accuracy, and recall, were achieved with a K of 47. This is a very simple algorithm, but it scores well on this data with F1 and precision scores in the low 70s and accuracy and recall scores of 80%. On this data set, it slightly, it must be said very slightly, outperforms our decision tree classifier. In summary, the K nearest neighbors algorithm is simple, but effective. It uses a hyperparameter, K, and measures the Euclidean distance between a sample point to be classified and its K nearest neighbors. It then uses a majority or plurality voting system. Each of the K neighbors gets a single vote for its own class. The classification of the sample point is simple, based on the most votes received. This is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Please join me in the next video on machine learning. For more information on Lucidate services in DeFi or AI, please use any of the resources on your screen.